Hello my friends, it's time for another update from the Utopus development. So I feel like I'm probably a little bit late from my um, from my goal or my schedule. But right now I'm putting together a build which I'm gonna submit to Steam. That would be the, uh, the kind of the first release candidate. Um, it, it'll take Steam a few days to process that and that's a requirement. Um, when you publish something in Steam the first time they will take longer. They will um, go through the, to, through the game and make sure it meets their uh, standards. Um, once um, they've approved the initial um, the binary, then it's going to be faster to, to make updates. This is an important first step. Once I'm done with this step, then I will be able to launch the game at will at any time. So it's important to get this thing done uh, and it's a major step. Once once I'm at a point where I can make builds and, and have them approved by Steam, then we are very close to, to releasing the game. So about the release date. Um, as I said, I probably couple of days behind schedule at this point I'm still um, I'm still trying to uh, keep the the original schedule for steam which would be uh, the 22nd or 23rd um, like next week Monday Tuesday to go live and um, and then I had a call with Atari today and we were talking about like when when would be a good time to put the game out on the VCS and um, and it's probably the best idea right now to to delay the VCS by one week. So you know we're gonna stagger the releases um, to have it out on um, Steam first, then only one week later uh, put it out on on the VCS. Um, that way um, I won't have two different platforms to handle right on the launch date um, in case there are any issues. Um, so. Aside from that, um, I wanted to show a couple couple things today um, from um, from the development. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to show you um, um, some um, some progress uh, and tell you more about the, the game itself. So now, when you start a game, um, you'll your it'll be at your home base, and uh, there's a, there's a thirty second time limit. Uh, per game in in which you can uh, stay um, stay in the base. So uh, once the once you once the game starts, the clock um, is ticking, and um, if you if you stay in the base, it goes down all the way to the zero, and then after that you have no base anymore. Then you're uh, you'll still be respawning, but there is no place to get recharged for energy. So it's a good idea to get out of the base as soon as possible and and uh, spend minimal time there. That's basically your safe haven, but, but you need to be very um, careful on when to use that. Now, since the last video, I made some upgrades to the, uh, to the weapons and, and to, the, to the sort of like the death animation. So, let's see. So, um, when, you, when you play the game, there are three ways of firing. One is the standard weapon, which fires to the, to the direction your ship is pointing. Goes like this. Another one is a bomb. So, so this is a this is the big weapon. Uh, it takes um, it takes quite um, take, it takes a while to recharge it, but it's a, it's a very powerful weapon. So you know when you hit um, hit the target with this weapon, um, it causes some, some some big damage. And then the third one is a tail tail gunner. So. That help. That kind of allows you to shoot any direction you want. So you can you can be you know, running away from an enemy and then uh, uh, suit backwards, or you know you can you can be uh, uh, you can go past another another base or somewhere and you know shoot shoot sideways. Tail gunner is pretty useful. It's it's not a powerful weapon, but it, but it's um it's a good in in a way way that it allows you to be uh, flying one way and be shooting another. So, so you, you can make kind of like a sneak attack, a sneak attacks with it. It's pretty cool. So, so this this is the basic um, map layout. So you have four bases here, um, and each each base is uh, is fortified. So, so you can go in in your own base without a problem. Uh, but if you try to go try to enter another base, um, there's a force field which basically um, pushes you away. It um, it works on your ammunition as well, so you won't be able to shoot anyone who's inside the base. 
But as I said, uh, the base is a limited time, it's a limited feature, so, so no one will be able to hide inside the base the whole time. It's just a place where you can go escape for a while. So after you spawn, um, assuming your, your base is still there, um, each base has three exits. So, so if, if someone is out there waiting for you to get out of the base, you'll have three ways to get out. So, so you'll, you know, pretty much you'll be able to find a safe exit from there. Another um, very important feature in Utopos is the line of sight. You only see things that your ship can see. So even though we are looking at the map from top down, you won't see anything that's not in a line of sight from your ship. So uh, that's, that's um, visualized here with this shadow. So when you're flying around, anything that is in the shadow um, will not be visible. So you, know, you can see there's the, there's the health energy power up, up there. So if I go around a corner, uh, that's gonna disappear. So um, things that are things that are in the shadow are not visible. So that includes power-ups, but it also includes enemy ships, meaning that you'll be able to go hiding and your enemy won't see you, but obviously then you won't see them either. So it's, um, it's a sort of an interesting, interesting hide and seek game. Um, there will be a power-up which open, opens up the map. So if you get that power-up, you'll be able to see uh, where other people are hiding, but they won't see you. So it's a pretty powerful thing. And speaking of power-ups, um, there will be various weapon power-ups, and then there will be um, more like a utility power-ups, such as the, the visibility uh, thing that, uh, that makes everything visible for you. There will only be one of each type in the level. So if you, if you, if you catch the, the visibility power-up, for example, um, you'll be the only one who has that. Um, but the thing with the power-ups is that if your if your ship blows up, um, all of the all, all of these power-ups that you collected will then be left on the scene for others to pick up. So, um, so it's going to be kind of kind of interesting. If you manage to pick up the right type of power-ups, you're going to be very very powerful. But then you need to be careful because if um, if the other players realize that they can team up against you shoot you up and then you'll be you'll lose all those those power-ups your ship is equipped with a shield that keeps uh, charging itself all the time so if you hit a wall uh, your shield goes down but um, then um, over time the the shield slowly goes goes back up again if you lose your shield if meaning that if the energy goes all the way to zero then the shield is done it won't come back on unless if you find a power-up that restores your shield, then then you'll you know get a new shield. Like in the first version, when um, when your ship exploded, you immediately respawned at your base. That was a sort of a temporary um, solution. So um, I wanted to show you what happens now. I've I've sort of like uh, completed uh, the death sequence. So the new death sequence, the ship blows up and drops on the floor, and uh, you get to see it for a while and um, until you respond back to your base uh, like this way but there will be different types of weapons and um, the idea is that they will be randomly spawned across the level and whoever picks picks a weapon will then, then be using that until their they you know their ship is blown up after which um, another player can pick up that weapon. Um, so the weapons will be a limited resource. There will be only there will only be one of each weapon type uh, collectible. So which means that pretty much all the players will be playing with different weapons. And the uh, the only way um, to really get the weapon you want is to blow up another player and steal their weapon. Um, so one of the features of this uh, of this shield is that if you go too close to the to the wall, it's going to uh, push you away, uh, kind of trying to pre prevent you from getting damage from the wall. If you go too fast, then obviously 
it won't be able to do that and um, then you then you take some damage and, um, and once your shield is done then it's done you won't get it back and then your hull starts getting out uh, damage and uh, when, when the hull is done then your ship is done so that's the current brokers um, getting ready to um, submit the build to steam it's very exciting and um, the visuals are starting to be there um, the, the map uh, might need um, a little bit of more work I will need to add a couple more weapons and then um, the biggest missing part right now is the, the part that does the matchmaking and um, a user interface for building a team you know so that you, you're gonna create a new team you can join a team you can leave a team um, all of that is pretty much work in progress and, and we'll see how much of that is available at the initial launch. But like I said, uh, there will be updates frequently after after we go out. Someone asked me with my daughters playing last time in the last video if this is um, is the, if the game is intended for, for small children. And um, no, no, not really. This is um, they just happen to be that age and they are my daughters and they uh, they love playing the games I make. But the game itself is intended for uh, for all ages. Um, it, I make games that I want to play by myself. Uh, but the thing is, when I have young uh, young children, then obviously I try to make games that they could also enjoy. So uh, I don't I don't do like uh, mature adult themes in the games. Uh, aside from that, um, they you know. The games are not definitely not um, aimed at as as children's games. They're you know this is it's more like a retro style. So I'm thinking of uh, of um, I, when I think of the, the target audience, I'm thinking more of people who um, used to like the games in the 80s and 90s, and uh, you know when I was playing games and growing growing up with games, um, I. Uh, I can only make games from my own own experience. So basically, my games are a reflection of that era, and um, and I hope that, you know the new generation likes likes the games as well, of course. And I try to make them um, accessible, uh, but definitely um, um, intended for for anyone who loves good games. All right. So uh, thanks for watching. Please um, subscribe to the channel and uh, wishlist the game. And um, uh, I see you in the next update. Bye.